Season's greetings. This is Abby with WiltonLive.com here at the Hard Rock Live Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida for the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida Holidays at the Hard Rock Concert with special guest and Broadway star Linda Etter. The group, founded in 2010, has grown to over 140 members. With countless sold-out performances, they have reached over 12,000 audience members, delivering a message of love and inclusion every year. We are going to talk with some administrative and creative staff members tonight, including their guest star, Linda Etter. Now, let's take a peek behind the scenes of this special event. La, 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 tis the season to be jolly. La, 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 la. Oh, yes, we all know right now. We now are a gay apparel. So far, Merry Little Christmas. Make the Utah gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. We have Mark B. Kent here, who is the executive director of the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida. Thank you so much for talking with us tonight. No, thank you for talking with us. It's great to have you here. I would like to know, what was your chief goal after being installed to the position with the, the vocal group? Now, the first thing I wanted to do was get great clarity around their vision and, and help them shape where they want to go and what they want to be uh, as a musical asset to this community. Um, and then do what I can, could to mobilize resources and put in place strong plans that would get them there. So really a lot of structure and a lot of direction and a lot of planning uh, so that they could bring their own talents and energy and passion uh, to the table and make something fantastic happen. So as the Director of Development, I'm responsible for all of the fundraising. We are a nonprofit, 501c3. Uh, so we do take donations. We count on about half of our budget uh, is taken through donations, contributions, and grants from foundations, businesses, individuals, and government entities. Can you tell me how many years you've been a part of the chorus? I've started, uh, been with the chorus since it started, so it's my seventh season as well. I was the uh, assistant conductor, and then I have been the uh, interim conductor last year, and now I am now the uh, conductor. <laughs> Wow, so one of the founding members of the group. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm very proud of it. The growth happened quickly. When we got together, we went from 60 members to about 130 singing members in just two seasons. And that kind of growth is very difficult to manage. That's why I felt called to, to lead in a way. And I've always led either formally or informally. Uh, but that kind of growth is very difficult to manage. And I think the leadership of the course has done a phenomenal job doing that. I was a baritone section leader in my chorus um, in Michigan, out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. It was a, it was actually a mixed chorus, so the experience there with uh, men and women and the experience with just men was um, it's a little different, but it's uh, one and the same because you're always working together to um, being a you know, bring the production to life. What inspired you to get involved with the arts and the art education? You know, I feel like the arts are such an incredible part of who we are as human beings, and arts education has been cut dramatically over the years, and I just felt personally moved by my own life experiences to try and change that in, in some way. Tell us a little bit about your background, your inspiration for music. Well, uh, I come from a very musical uh, family, uh, so I've been involved with uh, music all my life. But really, uh, when I was in college back in Colombia, I joined the chorus and I sang uh, with them for about three years. And then I moved to the U.S., never had the opportunity to really join another chorus. And uh, this was my chance, and here I am. This is my first season with the chorus. For me, the, my love for the art has been very natural. And then uh, looking at all my, my previous experiences, I, I enjoyed sharing my, my knowledge and my, actually my contribution to the community with my, my art. I have a Bachelor of Music in voice. I went to a conservatory uh, up north in outside of DC and uh, loved singing, decided I wanted to be more on the business side of the arts, so I got a Master's in Performing Arts Leadership and Management. And I had never been here to Fort Lauderdale before and I was just looking for jobs and I saw this position and I had to take it. <laughs> 
You know, I started working in the arts when I was in the sixth grade. I grew up in a large family, very low income, and uh, and I needed something productive to do with my time. So, I started in theater at the time, and it's just been it's been the the the, the thread that's got me through school and into my life. Can you tell us what platform you find works best to get your word out there and get the support out there? Um, Facebook is the is the major one. We're getting more involved with Twitter. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of Twitter followers prior to this year, um, and we didn't really utilize it as a platform. But what we've done, what I've done a lot more of, is adding everyone you see, because then that gets more exposure. They retweet your tweet, you retweet their tweet. It's a it's a learning game, um, but it's a process, and I, th I think we're getting a little better at it. Um, it is daunting. It's daunting because you have to stay relevant, and you know you have to post stuff every day. And you know I'm not necessarily. At rehearsal every day so it's stuff you know you have to think of the media that or the content that you want to put out there so that it, it's a bit a little bit challenging but we're, we're working on it can you tell us a little bit about how you pick the talent what goes into the audition process for the gay men's course of south florida uh for solos we open uh, for all for to be a member okay let's let's start with to be a member to be a member we it's open to everybody uh if you can sing you have you can follow rhythm, you can you have a good pitch, then you're always welcome to be in our chorus. Because what we believe is uh, the chorus is partly part of your education. We educate all the members. Even if you have already been a good musician before or a new one, we try to help them and improve in their, in their talent that they have. <laughs> I mean, the whole repertoire that has been chosen for this event is really amazing. Uh, but I have to say that uh, Let There Be Peace on Earth is a piece that really talks to me. Uh, it's quite emotional, so I really have to focus to hold it together and uh, to make it through the piece with no tears. It, it really is an emotional piece. What are some of the most fun aspects of the rehearsals that you guys have together? You know what, is, is Harold calling us out? <laughs> He's really great. Um, he'll tell us, you know, if, if our vocals are a little bit too wide and he always gives the hand motions and, and you learn that way. You know, you learn, you don't learn, you know, hard and fast. He's not like, a, you need to sing like this. He's just, he's, you, you, he plays along with us and that's what I really enjoy about it. I get opportunities to perform in such beautiful venues and spaces with other artists. It's really, truly inspiring and rewarding. Like it's like bigger than life. And now I'm currently with the Jose Limon Dance Company and this is my first season with them and I'm on a little break right now, but this is the time that I'm taking to, you know, get back to the community. What kind of surprises can we expect in the show? Well, you're going to expect lots of energy, not only for me, but from every member of the chorus. And uh, I am excited to be part not only of the singing uh, um, performance, but also I'm going to be one of the eight dancers uh, singing uh, to the rhythm of the Rockettes. Uh, so that's going to be really, really exciting. Tell us a little bit about some of the pressures of being a stage manager for the chorus. Well, it's interesting because I'm the director, the stage director, but when you do like a one night concert event like this, you do kind of take over some stage management sort of duties. Um, I'm calling the show, which means I'm involved with the lighting and the sound design and like the stage structure of the show. So it is a lot of pressure because you get one shot to do it because there's no dress rehearsal for something like this. I mean, my God, getting to work with this, um, you know, the Gay Men's Chorus is really a national treasure and so was Linda Etter and I've been such a fan of hers for a long time. So getting to do that at the Hard Rock Arena is kind of like amazing. 
I think that when that when somebody of her quality and her stature and have rec- had recorded all these albums who says in no uncertain terms that she's excited to sing with a gay chorus, um, that that's why we do this. That's why we bother with it, and and uh, that's going to keep happening. It happened with Anne Hampton Calloway, and now with Linda Etter, and I think the sky's the limit in terms of celebrities that we can sing with. I can't wait. I've always had a passion for like singing and theater and dance is kind of theater but I know that's another realm but knowing that she was going to be you know like on the stage was truly truly inspiring I was really lost of words seeing her perform and seeing her rehearse she's so beautiful and graceful and she's been doing it for a long time and you can just see the wisdom and like how she's a master of the stage and how excited are you to have your special guest this evening linda etter to share the stage with you guys very excited uh i've been talking to her since uh, we uh organized this program and she's a delight to have to be with uh to talk with and even for the planning process and uh the moment I saw her today, just like I felt very comfortable with her. It is their first time to meet her. We are so thrilled to have special guest and Broadway star here tonight with us, Linda Etter. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Can you tell me what inspired you in your early career with music and the arts? Well, I think I, I always wanted to do it, but I was very, very shy. So I really credit it um, to Judy Garland when I heard her singing. The Wizard of Oz, um, and also my high school choir teacher, which is why it's so wonderful to be singing with the Gay Men's Choir, because I love to being in choir so much. So for me, it's always a thrill every time I get a chance to do that again. People ask me all the time, how do you get into show business? And I always say, I have no idea. I feel like it just kind of fell into my lap. But at the same time, you know, I be- I'm one of these people that believes that you have to really uh, know what you want to do in detail. And if you can do that, really visualize it, then somehow you just rearrange your universe around you and things start to happen. People start to help you. You end up being in the right place at the right time, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Can you tell us what it meant to you when your portrayal of Lucy in Broadway's Jekyll and Hyde earned you Best Broadway Debut World Theater Award? Well, you know, it took so many years to get that show there that I actually cried opening night on the curtain call. I came out and just started crying because I was so relieved. You know, it's very hard to get a show to Broadway. So just getting there was such a huge accomplishment. Um, But to, you know, be recognized from a very first thing like that was pretty special. And that's, I have that award and it sits right on top of my piano and every now and then I look at it. Why is it important for you to appear with the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida for this holiday concert? Well, it, as I said, I love to sing with a choir and to sing with this many gorgeous guys, this, this, this many voices all at once. I mean, it's quite, quite something. Um, and they are really, they're very, very good. I've sung with a lot of choirs all over the country, but these guys are, are fantastic. And for me, I think this is the last one I'm gonna be doing for the holiday. It's my last actual performance for 2016. So this is a nice way to go out and to, it's really put me in the holiday spirit.
tell us and our viewers some of the things that are fulfilling with working with the course? You know, this group of men are so passionate about uh, creating a greater sense of equality and inclusion in a broader community. Uh, they work countless hours in rehearsals every week. They dedicate themselves. They pay monthly dues. They, they inspire me on a daily basis to give them my absolute best and, and help them achieve the, the, the greatest things that they can, they can ever hope to. I mean, being a singer and being a member of the LGBT community, working for this chorus has been a dream come true. My vision for the course is really to have a diverse program ev uh, all the time. We would like to reach everybody. We want to be the chorus, not just for the gay community, but for all the community that we have here in South Florida. Also, we would like to go and reach out to other, maybe other states or even other countries. That's uh, what we've been planning for the last, uh, for the coming three years that we've been looking forward to. So I hope, you know, being at the Hard Rock like this, we're going to have a lot more outreach and hopefully um, we'll get fans for life and a lot more m new members. It always comes back to the music. So for all of these things that we do, all these places we go, all the service we perform, there's nothing like a night like tonight where it just all comes together with the music. That's what always brings us back. Uh, so no matter what can happen or what's going on around us, that music is the focus. And can you also tell us a little bit about what the holiday season means to you or to you and your family? You know, the holidays are a time where we really stop and pause during the course of the year and think about the things that are the most important to us, and that's love, and it's family, and it's friends, and it's uh, putting away the, the hustle and bustle of work and stress and just reflecting for a little bit on our greater humanity, and, and music's a great way to do that. I love the holidays because my birthday is next week. So from about now until um, New Year's Eve, this is the highlight of my year. So I, I can't beat it. We don't have a large family in the United States. Uh, my mom is from Norway, my dad is from Austria, so we only had a small nuclear family. So we have a brand new uh, baby. I am now a great aunt. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, so that really makes the holidays. The Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida would like to wish everybody a... Happy Holidays! Happy Holidays, everybody. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, Ose Shalom. Happy Holidays from the Gay Men's Chorus of South Florida. Happy Holidays!